وخلق الإنسان ضعيفا and man has been created in weakness he is not a sinner he only forgot he is a good man oh, the same thing the secularists believe the how did, is, how did death come oh, Islam has an answer for you let me read it for you it says in Surah 67 and um, I just um, want to verify it for you it is he who created life. No, it is he who created death and then life. Check it out. Am I telling the truth? Verse 2. What did he say? He who created death and life. Thank you. Allah created death first and then life. Allah didn't create life at all first. So there is no original sin. La death did not need to enter into the world as a result of sin. So it's a hodgepodge, completely mixed and messed up theology. Doctrine of salvation through grace is unknown to Islam. The best a man can do to satisfy Allah is blow himself up. Because by being a martyr, you reach into paradise instantaneously like that. Unlike the Christian doctrine of salvation through faith, through grace of God, that in the fullness of time, the Son of God died for you and me on the cross of Calvary. And whosoever receives him has been now given an eternal life in Christ Jesus. Your salvation is assured. Islam has no assurance of their salvation. Nothing. Salvation does not come into there. None. Doctrine of the inspiration of scriptures. And we saw, according to Islam, our scriptures are tampered, played around with. We believe in witchcraft, in sorcery. The whole Bible recites everything given is about Muhammad, nothing about Jesus, nothing about anybody else. So the validity of the scriptures is not recognized, is debated, refuted, rejected completely. Our scriptures, according to Islam, is inaccurate, completely inaccurate, not worth having. So, then why are they so much afraid? Why are they so afraid of the gospel? Ah, oh, you see, I'll tell you the answer. The Quran gives an answer, but later on, if you bear with me, yes? and the doctrine of Christian living. The doctrine of Christian living, the Bible says one man, one wife, for instance. I mean, there is a lot of, that's not the only Christian living, but let's just take that one. <laughs> Have free intercourse with free women. Two, one is guaranteed. Two, three, or four. As many concubines as you can afford. So, what? Yes. It's not polygamy, it is not bigamy, it is nothing. It is just righteous. Allah has made it so. Hmm? Christian living. In this Christian living, no, all human beings are equal, says the Quran. No. هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون؟ هل يستوي الذين Do are they equal those who know and those who don't? Are they equal those who see and those who are blind? Are they equal those who are for bliss and those who are for hell? They're not equal. So a Muslim and a non-Muslim are not equal. Even in the eyes of law, they are not equal. A man and a woman are not equal. إن الرجال قوامون على النساء Men are above women, says Islam. Allah has elevated them. Man and woman are not equal. A Jew, a Christian, and a Muslim are not equal. So the Christian living, they are not equal before law. If you are a Christian, let's say if you are a Muslim, and you have one wife, and you have four children, three daughters and one son, and God forbid, but you were, to, you were to pass away. You just died, natural death. The laws that Allah for inheritance written in the Quran are as such. 
that your one son will inherit more put all the four women together your wife and the three daughters their share and that of the son the son would have more and if you don't have a son if you have only four daughters if you have a brother the brother will inherit means your uncle will inherit more than you will inherit though he was your dad ah because Allah chosen men above women all the time This Allah seems to be very unjust. He doesn't only seem it. It is the fact. That's how the Quran puts it. So Christian living, the sense of equality, the sanctity of life, the purity of living, Islam knows nothing about it. So any of you have ever any contemplation, ever contemplated becoming Muslim? After this session, I hope you would have changed your mind. And if you didn't, then you're guilty, as charged. The Christian giving in our tithes, you see, we give life. We impart not only, as Bruce said, we give back and we say thank you to the Lord, but we give life. We give out of our wealth, we give out of our time, we give ourselves. And as you and I go and share out the gospel, we impart life. That is an important aspect of our living and giving. So what about this gospel if you are going to preach it? Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, in tatiu li fariqan min alladhina u'atu al-kitab, yuruddukum ba'da imanikum kafirin. O you who have believed, meaning the Muslim community. If you were to listen, not obey, listen, just listen, to a people to whom we have given a book. That's the Christians. They would render you apostates, unbelievers, fit for hell, after you have believed. That's why Islam is afraid of this gospel. That is why this Bible is banned in Islamic countries, banned in Islamic societies, banned in Islamic communities. That's why they built up their own schools. They don't want the Bible. They don't want the gospel. At least the Christian child come and tell a Muslim, you know, oh, Jesus loves you. Aha. Uh -huh. That is what the Quran says. They would render you as apostates. And we think we should be quiet. If you be quiet, you're under judgment. You should share the gospel all the time with all the Muslims at every day. The Bible says, when would you share the gospel? The commandment of the scripture it says, in season and out of seasons, when it is suitable and when it is unsuitable. At all times, we give him glory. The obedience in Islam, according to Surah 4, Surah An-Nisa, وَمَنْ يَتِعَ الرَّسُولُ فَغَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهُ Whosoever obeys the apostle has already obeyed Allah. And what did the apostle say? He said, you have enemies. I want you to go and slaughter them. And this is what he taught in the Quran. So, when the Muslims do it, we mustn't be upset with them. Because what they hold is, they think it is light when it is darkness. Now, of course, it is not all legalism, Islam. Islam has power also. It's a house of power, a power base. But not from God, not from the Lord God, Jesus Christ, that you and I know. No, no, no. It has its source of power. It's sinister, diabolical, demonic. And again, not only my view, the Quran says they believe in the jinn, and jinn imparts this power. And Allah gives power to Satan, and Satan gives powers to them. So everybody is together there.